Hey traders, David Frost, my strategic forecast. Be here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Tuesday, May 30, 2023. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on the docket today? Well, today we're going to flip the script a little bit just to change things up some. I'll give you a couple of extra things in the back end. We're going to start with a little scenario. Let's think of the week as a game, maybe like a baseball game. We're talking about specifically day trading and how to look at the process, how to look at the business, how to look at the tape. Think about it like this. Early in the game, you get a guy on first base, that's a good start. You get a guy on first and second base, nobody out, that's a great start. You put bases loaded with nobody out, that's one hell of a start to the game slash to the week. Anything better than that is gravy, you're driving in some runs, you're taking an early lead. Why do I talk about this? Let's take a look inside the numbers and I think it'll become clear over the next couple of minutes. Early in the morning, overnight, they were doing the thing where the market, Mrs. Market, went up to fill that elusive gap that we talked about for weeks and weeks and weeks, 422.14. Back to the visual, the top of the chart, you see a horizontal line in fuchsia, 422.14. That's what it looks like on a 30-minute chart, for example. Normal garden variety market behavior They could have pushed a little higher in the morning, or they could have found resistance at the gap. They chose, for the most part, to find resistance just above the gap. What I urge you to do is pause the video, go back to the notes, double check the charts for accuracy. Keep in mind, this is posted at zero dark 30. If she falls away from the gap, the only thing, the first place we have for running a test is 420.75. Here's a little taste test. As you can see on this five minute chart, where right of the vertical is today's activity, 42075, a little spike of it found support. The market bounced back, Mrs. Market bounced back in the other direction and provided trade number one. Let's scroll up, see what we have as the day begins to mature, as they say. Just after nine o'clock, we're saying if they're going to keep pushing higher, there's a zone that's the next area of overhead resistance. It's magnetic. They'll likely have a reaction back in the other direction if they get there. They didn't get there, so we turn our attention to what happens if they're below the gap at 422.14. That would mean at 921, you see the flip side appear. 420.75 is the first place of support below the gap. It's the last breakout area in the sequence. Below that, she wants to run a test of maybe. 420 and a spike of it, you'll see that refined a little bit later. Here's an hourly chart. Let's look at this objectively. We did this in the live room today. Let's do it right here. 420.75. It's actually the number we were using today was 420.77. And also in the live room, we discussed 420.72. It's a nickel spread. The market runs up to here and is summarily rejected. The market comes back, fills the gap. But this area is still the last breakout area in the sequence. Just because they filled the gap doesn't mean they're going to stay above 420.75. If they did, that's one thing. If they don't, that's something different. So we know that that area is important. So are they likely to fight that area? And the answer is, yes, they are. Are they likely to fight that area? And the answer is, yes, they are. A picture is worth a thousand words. Remember, pause the video, go back to the chart, double check the work. So they open them, they're quiet, we're watching, we're discussing in the live room the alter ego stuff, we need patience. You wait for the market to give you what you want, you don't chase it around, you don't invent the trade along the way. Here it is, they start to come down, the first zone of support is 420.77 to 419.80 for a bounce back in the other direction. You already saw that one, they did the thing. That was trade number one. Once you're in the trade, where you're going to take it up to, you're going to take a scalp portion, which to us is five to seven points. Then we're going to ride the rest up higher, 421.75, which is 10 points from entry or slightly more for those traders that waited for a spike through. That's another place of overhead resistance. That 
and between 422.14. Smells like another exit. You get entries and exits. Nice trade. Remember, pause the video, read the notes. Go back to the chart, double check them. First trade in the books, holding a trailer is fine. If they stop, you added a break even. Put a base hit in your pocket, got a guy on first, nobody out. Let's see what else we have. By 923, spike the low into the zone on the table. If they do it, 41980 is the next number of interest. Picture's worth a thousand words. 41980 is the horizontal line. That was the next area of interest. What happened? They bounced right off of it, making a high in that run over 421. Another 10 pointer. That's 10 S&P points, if you will. Let's see what else we have. We're waiting on 419.80. That's the next spot. We know if they stay above 420.77, that was that breakout area we just discussed with the line running up and the rejection. That's the case for another attempt higher. 11.21, showtime again. You already saw the trade. We scroll up. Scalp portion took about eight, nine minutes. On to the next thing. If they get above 420.77, that's the bull case. Pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart and double check the work. How about this one? 12.15. The next number and zone is 419.55. The line has been adjusted, 419.55. How you doing? Basically another 9, 10 pointer. That's three. Pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart and double check the work. There was another one in there. There was a spike the low and rip it back up that traders got in the live room, which was a four for four. It was also in here. I just didn't highlight it when we went over it. It was earlier in the morning. There was a four for four opportunity. We call that the golden sombrero. Let's go to the daily chart of the SPY. And by the way, if you're interested in the live room, sign up. There's a trial out there. I'm giving you a week to see what it's like. If you're skeptical, you'll be surprised. If you're paying attention to everything we talk about in these videos, you won't be surprised. Let's look at this objectively. Same thing from before, using the daily chart. Here's the former high. There's your rejection. They're right back up. A breakout. Is it a false breakout or they just couldn't do it today? They filled the gap. They're hanging around not too far away from that former high. That's the big picture. That's the way you have to look at the big picture. There's other stuff, and it may be a short-term top, but we don't know yet. What we do know is they closed above 420. 420 is important. They filled a gap. They didn't close above the last breakout area, but is that a death sentence for the market? Of course not. Weekly chart, last week they closed above the 100-week moving average. Today they're still above the 100-week moving average. They came back. They tested it. They tested the other stuff we talked about from the daily chart. This is garden variety stuff. It's a long week, even though it's a short week. Still have three trading days left. We'll see what happens during each one of them. Remember, this is the gap that was filled right here today. It's right above. It even looks like it's right on top of it still. It was filled by a few pennies. You have a pivot high here. Is there a reason they cannot get to the pivot high? We don't know that they will, but there's no material reason why they can't unless something changes on the chart. What could change on the chart? Ah, very good question, Grasshopper. For now, the only material thing is if they start staying, getting much below and staying below 420.77, they're just a touch below it on close today, but this is the first day they filled the gap. They had a reaction off the gap. It's not that big of a deal. Look at the breakup candle from Friday. Does it make sense that they could, if they wanted to, eat some time off the clock, near the highs, halfway down, run some tests, a retracement inside that breakup candle? Sure they can. Could they come down to the lower portion? Sure they can. What if they get below the low of the breakup candle? That's going to change the tape. Write that down. Put it on a sticky note. What's going on over in Camp IWM? Little bit of relative weakness today, not much, down a third of a percent. The spiders were flat. The S&P was up like two points today, whatever it was. It's not a big deal. That's not telling you that there's conviction one way or the other. It was just a day where they filled the gap, pulled back, closed where they closed. That's how we're reading it. This is the weekly chart of Camp IWM. Has anything materially changed? No. They're doing this thing 
where you got a bearish wedgish thing. They came to test the bottom. They came to test the top. Bottom, top, bottom, top, middle. Break the chain in the upward direction above this moving average here. They start to climb this breakdown candle. Break the chain in the lower direction and you have a different type of market going on and other markets are likely following suit. Daily chart below the rest of the moving averages, meaning the 50 and the 20 down here, and it changes back to, uh-oh, are they going to retest the lows? Until further notice, until they do, the IWM is not in good shape. It's in bad shape. Until they do, meaning turn around and do the other thing. What's going on with the folks down at the transportation department? trying to get through these moving averages. They were up today about half a percent. So we've got relative strength in the transports, which is my second favorite market leading indicator, a number one canary in the coal mine. Write that down, put it on a sticky note. Relative weakness in my favorite or number one leading market indicator, market leading indicator, Camp IWM. The only thing we could tell you here from a daily chart perspective is if they get above these highs and the moving averages, these highs meaning right here, then you have a chance to run a test of these highs and into the 100 period moving average. The weekly chart's telling you they're having a tough time getting anywhere and going. This is really a pattern inside of a pattern. So what you have here is break up candle low. They closed below at one time, tested it a few more, and they're staying above. But inside of that, you have a down move from here, and you have one of these wedgish bearish things, you could take it a down move from there, a down move from here. It doesn't really matter. It's a move down, and then you have a bearish wedgish thing. So until they break the chain, and the chain would be getting above these moving averages. So on a weekly basis, until they're above the 100 period moving average, here's what we're going to say. No dice. What about the Q people? Up about half a percent on the day, still in a melt-up operation. You have a red candle because they were higher at the open, and they closed lower. That doesn't mean it's bearish, it just means they were higher early, closed lower, but they didn't close poorly per se, they still closed positive on the day, they just gave up the gains, they filled the gap, we're not going to read exactly too much into that one. In fact, by the way, newsflash, they didn't actually fill the gap left open from Friday, they made an attempt, came a few pennies short, it's not a big deal any way you want to look at it. Here's one of those things I gave you extra at the end today. The Q people might want to write this one down, 359.35. That would be a target if they continue to move up. They're too high on the chart. It's very difficult to buy it here for a move to 359.35. But those that are long, that would be a target for an exit. It's also overhead resistance and inside the number members will refine the number down of overhead resistance if they get to that place. Write it down. The XLF was flat today. We did have some weakness throughout the banking sector. Below all the moving averages, the trend is your friend until her crap gets thrown out the window. Weekly chart, riding the 200-week moving average. Stay above, they have a chance to rally. Get below, and this is essentially a bear wedge that's eating time off the clock, waiting to go lower. The sign or signal is start staying below 32, closing daily below 32, weekly below 32. They work on these pivots here, here, and here. And if that's the case, then this is the case. The other side of that is break the chain, get above this wedge thing and begin climbing and above these moving averages, the 20 and the 50, and begin climbing this breakdown candle. We don't know exactly how high they'll get, but that's what they'll start doing, and they'll break the chain of what this looks like, this tight pattern back and forth. Semi's chart, also known as Smash Mouth, getting lifted up by the NVIDIAs and the Broadcoms, which also had a tinge of reversal action today. You got this AI thing, the semis are getting pulled up with AI, AI's becoming parabolic on some charts, it's becoming the current meme situation. What does parabolic look like? Well, let's look at NVIDIA, and more specifically, a monthly chart, and this is basically what it looks like. It could keep going, but this is what parabolic looks like. It's a straight line up. Is this the end? I gave a number in the live room of 
405, give or take, whatever that number was on NVIDIA. It was a target on the way up and should have been overhead resistance. But we don't know it's going to be overhead resistance. Why? Because here's the breakout area. They're at new highs. You don't know how high exactly they're going to go. There's no point of reference. The Vago or Broadcom monthly chart looks very similar to the same. However, that's a reversal. Big volume, participation, exits at 900 over 900. They hand it over to the retail investor chasing the stock. The retail investor is now standing squarely on the box for a pie in the face. What was the high today? Exactly 921.78, finishing at 803.34. That classifies as a reversal. As compared to NVIDIA, just to compare and contrast, you don't have the same type of volume. You don't have the same situation. You have a tail, but this doesn't have to be the high. We don't know it is or it isn't. It's different than what we just saw on Broadcom. Similar parabolic moves, different charts on the daily. That's the second thing we're talking about that we don't normally weave into these videos. If I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you, without you, these videos are not possible. That is true and accurate information. We're pulling the ripcord here today. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.